My first thought waking up every morning usually is, thank you for letting me wake up the next day. Every day you wake up is a blessing, especially at my size. Hi guys, it's Jess. Welcome back to Plot Twist. Season 11 of My 600 Pound Life did not disappoint. Every season, the patients get bigger, the meals get worse, and I get even more motivated to hit the gym. Before we chow down, like this video and subscribe to Plot Twist. Now deep fry some Twinkies, put a straw in a two liter bottle of soda, and let's check out the three worst eaters on season 11 of My 600 Pound Life. I'm too big to sleep in a normal bed. So I have to sleep on a mattress one foot off the floor. And to get to my feet, I roll forward out of bed. The bottle of water he slams down when he first wakes up in the morning is probably the healthiest meal he consumed all episode. You could fact check me on that. Once I'm clean, I have to sit down for a little bit. Then I'm ready for my favorite time of the day. My weight makes it challenging to cook the kind of breakfast that I want. It's honestly pretty hard to tell what his first meal of the day is. It looks like he put an entire hog's worth of bacon into a vat of oil and is just sitting there to see what happens. Because of the weight, and the fat in between my legs. I can't stand up straight, which makes it really uncomfortable to stand in the kitchen for a long period of time. So I actually have to sit on a cooler that I sit on when I cook. He sits on an ice cooler with his butt crack hanging out and proceeds to cook up what appears to be two dozen eggs. I'm willing to bet there's some ice cream stashed in that cooler for later too. I make the meal with my stomach, not with my brain. So I have a really big meal. And when I start eating, as soon as I hit that first bite, I eat it all. He then proceeds to make 12 breakfast burritos with sausage, bacon, and cheese straight out of the plastic package, and of course, his precious eggs. When I'm eating, I don't think of anything, and I, it clears my mind. The food, I mean, when I eat food, at least for the time that I'm eating it, it helps take the lonely away. This might be the biggest breakfast I've ever seen anyone eat on the show. 12 breakfast burritos? I'm honestly nervous to see what's for lunch. Tonight, we're gonna make dinner and sit together with my mom and my daughter. And I'm really looking forward to that. You want spaghetti? Yeah. That's what we're making. Lunch starts with emptying two pounds of raw ground beef into the same pot he just cooked all that bacon in. He and his mom then put a pound of pasta in a big pot and get to work. Just get up. Boop. <laughs> My legs would have been wrecked. So I just started to move and I thought, oh, wait a minute, it moved too far too fast. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna pull it back. And then... Okay, this is still really hot. <laughs> Sheer amount of pasta with chili and red sauce in front of him is staggering. Just look at the size of the normal portions that his daughter and mom eat. How do you feel about daddy being really big? Kind of sad because we used to go to a pool every Saturday. And before we left, we would always play that game, checkers. Yeah. Mm. I forgot about checkers, it was fun. Well, when I lose some weight, we can start doing that stuff again. Let me get some milk. Just when I thought the portion sizes weren't acceptable, this man really gave me something to complain about. Watch as he slams back an entire gallon of milk while he eats this chili and pasta. All of this should be illegal. My first thought waking up every morning usually is, thank you for letting me wake up the next day. Every day you wake up is a blessing, especially at my size. Next up, we've got Wes. He's even worse than Chris, if you can believe it. I don't love the way my body looks. It's hard to deal with everybody scrutinizing me. So I'm grateful I can always rely on ordering through the app on my phone. As much as I'd love to say he starts his day with a low calorie smoothie and a protein bar, I could never lie to our loyal subscribers. Instead, Wes chooses chaos and orders a catering sized tray of tacos. One of the perks of living by yourself is being able to eat breakfast naked. I don't enjoy clothes because clothes can be quite restrictive. As a small fan majestically blows his hair in the wind, he eats 10 to 15 breakfast burritos all in one shot. There's never a limit to how many breakfast burritos I can eat after my morning shower. It's like I like to eat them so much that when I am chewing, I cram it in and I get this high off of it. For some reason, I know he's telling the truth. Growing up, my parents didn't have a lot of money but my dad did love to cook good food. And the portions that he served my sister and I were generous to say the least. My idea of what a portion was growing up is way jacked up. I grew up associating large meals with my father's love. His father must have loved him a lot then. When I graduated from high school, the local junior college had a drama department and I got chosen for another major role in this play. I discovered how to party and before I knew it, I had blown through my college loans partying and binge eating fast foods when I was living with my friends. It was in college that Wes discovered how to party for the very first time. A few years of those bad habits and Wes partied his way into morbid obesity. You think you're gonna be much longer? I'm, I'm ready to go and, and, and I, I need to eat some lunch or something. Okay, I'll, I'll uh, be out in a minute. All right, thank you. These days, Wes can't even sit up and wait in the car while his dad goes food shopping for him. You got it, Wes? I got it. I'm gonna try. 
My legs are hurting. I want to go back outside and sit down. He can't even walk a few steps without huffing and puffing. Plus, he's too antsy to rush out and grab food somewhere else. You know you're getting too fat when you're not even excited about grocery shopping anymore. It's very hard for me to admit I have a problem because it's like any addiction. Your mind creates the addiction and then you use that as an excuse to keep eating and then you just want more and more and more and you're never satisfied. I have lost control and my food controls me. I have imprisoned myself in this body, in this lifestyle. As soon as the trip to the store is over, he runs home to eat his precious food. Instead of telling my family and friends that I have a problem, I just won't have them come over and I'll ask them not to come over and I won't invite them over. I'm not even certain what kind of concoction he's forking out of that cup, but I can assure you it's not low fat or low calorie. I don't think I should have taken my dad to see Dr. Now because now my dad thinks that he has carte blanche to tell me what to eat and what not to eat. And I like control. You can't have this pasta, can you? Nope. Oh, leave, oh God, that hurts. I'll leave you the wire basket. This was okay when you first came over, but now you're really like... I'm the... Junk food junkie police. You're doing it now. After his visit with Dr. Now, Wes's dad comes into his apartment and starts cleaning out all his junk food. He's trying to help keep his son on track. You got a stash in there? Just go find out. <laughs> what do you got in here, Wes? <clears throat> wow. It's going to be all right, Wes. But when he enters his bedroom, he shakes out Wes's pillowcase to reveal that he's been stashing candy and snacks inside of it. His dad was obviously upset. Well, let me do that. Yes. I don't want you to make a mess, please. My back's killing me yet. Hold on. You're already sweating. Yeah. I want to sit down for a moment. Gino wakes up in the morning and breaks a sweat just hovering over some eggs. The mere thought of eating works him up into a frenzy. My mom aggravates me sometimes. You want me to do them? Because you're not, the four can't fit in that pan. I'm doing just fine. But she never gets in the way of how much I want to eat. And it's always been like that as far back as I can remember. He can't move an inch without sweating, but still his mom puts four pieces of French toast on the stove and literally 20 sausages for him to eat. When my parents got divorced, it was definitely hard on me. Food brought me comfort. And if I have to say, that was probably when eating for me became something bigger than just filling up on food. He completes the meal by whipping up a bunch of eggs and then sits on the couch and goes to town on it all. If I had the option of what I wanted to do, I would be cooking in a restaurant of my own. It's very difficult to be this heavy and try to work into a kitchen. It's almost nearly impossible. Next up, he pulls up to some place called the Meat King and shops for food until he drops. That's the pork head of Moroccan style. Put it in, put it in, put it in, put it in, come on, I want to I don't go. know what it is. Here's cereal, your kind that you like. You ate the whole box I got you the other day. Oh, look at this strawberry fluff. Here, I actually want this. I, I actually want to try this. You want to drink some now? His mom stuffs the cart full of horrible food and even asks if he wants to start eating some of the groceries now while they shop. We love a good enabler, don't we? I need to stop. I knew that. But the reality is that I need help. Any minute he can stop breathing. I don't even want that day to come. All that effort worked up an appetite, so he treats himself to some Burger King, which he lays on his belly and eats in bed, like the Burger King he truly is. Nico found a place in Houston that we can move into next month. It's gonna be hard not to see Jess as often. We've been dating a couple months now, and it's been going very well. Now Gino actually gets a girlfriend out of nowhere and starts to kind of cheap out on his diet. Gino, a beautiful life is laid out in front of us. You have to pick if you're coming with me and Rose on this journey, because if not, cut off the sale of this house and you could go move down there with her, or we do what we planned and we continue our journey and you tell her to just wait in the wings till you figure out what you gotta do when you come back after our program and our success. In this scene, his cousin calls him out for focusing on her instead of his weight loss journey. Today I'm going to meet Jess for lunch. Nico thinks I should put all my energy into focusing on my health. I can see his point with that. Oh, that's a nice salad bar. I've never been to this one. It's nice. He tries to find a happy medium by taking her out on a date to a salad shop and eating a sensible portion. Mmm, that's good chicken. You want to try this? Kale? Because uh, we know nah. how much you love kale. He's finally taking steps to get his life back on track, but he's still shoving his face in just about every frame of the show. Who do you think was the worst eater in this video? Drop a comment and let me know. Thanks for watching Plot Twist.